Tonight, gravity. Just like the other members of your metalcore screamo band, it's constantly holding you back. But what would it be like to float through space? What could you achieve if you weren't stuck to this dumb planet? And why does space involve so much vomiting? I'm Claire Riley for CNET. Welcome to Watch This Space. From the CNET studios in Sydney, this is your weekly guide to everything on Earth you need to know about space. And in the wise words of the patron saint of Tennessee, Dolly Parton, all you need is Jesus and gravity. But what happens if one of them abandons you? No, that's not a scathing biblical burn against the original patriarch of Antioch, Simon Peter, though here at Watch This Space we are always trying to snag that crucial Galilee demographic. No, I'm talking about life without gravity, because turns out zero gravity is zero fun. To explain, let's get back to the basics of gravity. Everything with mass has gravity. Here on Earth, it's stronger in some places than others, but whether you drop an apple in America or in Australia, it's going to fall with an acceleration of roughly 9.8 metres per second per second. But gravity isn't just about big things pulling you close. Every object with mass exerts a gravitational pull. So technically, you're pulling on the Earth while it pulls on you. It's just that you're powerless against its forces. Even in space, gravity doesn't disappear altogether. The Earth is pulling on the Moon, the Sun is pulling on the Earth, and at the centre of it all, the Great Old One Cthulhu is holding everything together in its giant, merciless claws. Importantly, there's no such thing as zero gravity. No, the thing we refer to as zero gravity is actually microgravity. Just like micromanagement, it's there, but in a really undetectable, passive-aggressive way. Humans spend most of their time in space aboard the International Space Station. She says as though NASA is constantly shooting people up there like it's a Velcro wall at a trampoline park. But you may be surprised to know the ISS still feels the Earth's gravitational pull, despite all the footage you've seen of a dreamy Chris Hadfield floating up there with his guitar. The ISS is in orbit only about 250 miles above Earth. According to NASA, in that near-Earth orbit, gravity is still about 90% of what it is for humans here on Earth. So why do astronauts float? Because they're hurtling towards their death in a constant state of freefall. Imagine that feeling at the top of a roller coaster, right before you drop. While the ISS is constantly being pulled towards Earth by gravity, it's also travelling at a speed of 17,500 miles per hour, just enough to keep flirting with the Earth's gravitational pull. Any faster, it would fly out of Earth's orbit, but any slower, it would come crashing down towards Earth. It's in this sweet spot that I like to call the Tom Petty tribute band zone, constantly free-falling. So it looks like those astronauts inside the ISS are floating serenely, but really they're just living in the world's highest roller coaster ride that never ends. But apart from wanting to constantly hurl out the window, it's also actually kind of hard to spend every day in this kind of microgravity. Microgravity is kind of like a petulant child. Whenever it's around, nothing is ever where you left it. Want to put down your pen? There is no down. Want to read a magazine at the table? Your table is useless here. Sleeping attached to a wall, running tethered to a treadmill. In space, astronauts live like that weird kid with mittens pinned to his chest. Everything is attached to something else because microgravity simply can't be trusted. And just like a petulant child, microgravity often hangs around when you don't want it to. If you don't sleep in a well-ventilated area in space, then your breath just hangs around your face and forms a pool of CO2 until you suffocate. <laughs> Neat. Microgravity is the annoying cousin Oliver of space. Unhelpful, unwanted and definitely going to try and kill you in your sleep. So how do astronauts get used to that kind of microgravity here on Earth? Well, I have two words for you. Vomit, comet. The Vomit Comet, also known as the KC-135, is a four-engine turbojet that flies in parabolic arcs about 30 to 40 times over a two to three hour flight. It flies up at a 45 degree angle before diving sharply down again. At the top of the arc, passengers experience about 20 seconds of weightlessness. As the plane dives down to the bottom of the arc, passengers are pulled down and feel double the Earth's gravity. So if you want to shuttle off this mortal coil, remember, 2G and not 2G. That's the question, and the answer is the Vomit Comet. The KC-135 is used by NASA as part of its reduced gravity program to acclimatise astronauts to space travel, test equipment, and presumably by PhD supervisors trying to make their more annoying students hoff on cue.
The reduced gravity program might be designed for elite astronauts, but regular people like you and me can also experience the joy of blowing chunks in a retrofitted aeroplane. Companies like Zero G sell that bliss for a bit over $5,000 plus tax. So there you have it. If you're an elite astronaut or a mega-rich oil tycoon, you too can experience the thrills of microgravity. Losing pens, vomiting on cue, all while enjoying the endless freedom that comes with constantly falling towards your death. All right, that's it for this week's episode of Watch This Space. If you've enjoyed our program, then please be sure to hit the like button on your remote and subscribe to get more space news as it happens. I'm Claire Riley for CNET. Good night and Godspeed. Five-time winner of NASA's sexiest moustache, Chris Hadfield. I can't say that. I thought, I thought they'd announce the results. It's funny because I actually use the word whore for eating something really quickly and vomiting. I feel like we need more New Testament humour in this show. Is it still copyright infringement if I'm literally just miming the lyrics? Oh, I think we need a music budget on this show.